This is about a really shitty situation about Mick Gordon, which most of you might be aware of who Mick Gordon is. He is uh, the guy behind uh, the soundtrack for the 2016 Doom, which for those of you that don't know, let me show you guys real quick. Because I freaking love this soundtrack. The soundtrack is freaking amazing. Even though I never really finished the game, the soundtrack is beyond outstanding. Right? Let me actually skip here. I get it, it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but like this soundtrack is fantastic and it's won multiple awards and, and shit like that. It is awesome. And basically Mick Gordon, who's like the dude behind the soundtrack, is, has been done extremely dirty by Bethesda, at least apparently from what I've read of the situation so far. And, and this is not the first time that I'm hearing of this, by the way, because I remember when Doom Eternal came out, there were a lot of people complaining that the mixing of the game was not good and they basically blamed everything on Mick. And I remember that back then, Mick also made a couple of Twitter posts uh, indicating that like, I didn't do the final mixing on the on these tracks. Somebody at Bethesda did. So we have one of those people that, that just like think what their concept of music is like, hey, this just needs some more bass. And they just probably increase the bass and the travel. And it's like, oh, sounds so much good now. Yeah, let's go. With, probably without even considering that, like, you know, people have different, uh, you know, headsets. So different headsets interpret bass in a different way and like all of these things. This is why you have people who are professionals in this fucking field do that type of shit. But anyway... For some reason, Mick Gordon decided to expose all of this stuff. I've read some of the stuff around the situation, and it's pretty fucking disgusting. And Mick Gordon apparently has already had enough. Which, by the way, according to what he said, they, they were actually willing to pay him a six-figure sum to prevent him from coming forward with this information. They're just like, hey, now listen, just, just take the blame. We'll pay you. It's whatever. And he's like, nah, fuck y'all. Welcome back to the news, everyone. Today, it's actually a deadly serious topic. It really is. And it's By the way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to link the video ahead of time. And if you happen to be watching this on YouTube, if this makes it on there, there'll be a link in the uh, description. You guys know what to do. Click the link, let it play in the background, uh, and hit the like button. That's a little bit upsetting because the guy in question, Mick Gordon, did suffer pretty damn serious reputational damage. And id, the developers of Doom and Doom Eternal, I mean, they published an open letter which allegedly is completely full of lies that tanked this man's reputation and uh, did pretty damn severe career damage to him because after the claims that the like studio director of id made about Mick Gordon, who of course did the legendary soundtrack of Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal, I mean, who in their right mind would work with Gordon again if those things were true? It has, however, transpired that there absolutely is another side to the story. Now, this is a whole thing that went down in 2020, right? And where it really hit a fever pitch is when the OST, like the actual you know, publication of, uh, of the album, when it was delayed, we kind of started to understand that the thing that it wasn't really Mick Gordon's actual creative vision, and the fever pitch, when it all maxed out, was when Marty Stratton, who is the studio director of id, released this open letter. This open letter that now Mick Gordon is heavily calling into question. And it is an open letter that absolutely threw Gordon under the bus in a way that potentially we're finding out now may indeed have been extremely malicious. So we now have quite a big breakdown of this story, even including six figure hush money. So yeah, yeah. This one really does have it all. As, of course, does today's sponsor. NordVPN.com forward slash Bellular News. And it's available at my link with four months for free and a 30-day money-back guarantee. They've even got a new bundle that includes NordPass. And NordPass will handle your passwords. Now, not only is that extremely convenient, but it also helps protect you against things like, say, credential stuffing attacks, which you don't want. Of course, a VPN offers loads of protection as well, as an example, encrypting your traffic. And that hinders things like man-in-the-middle-of-attacks, keeping you safe. Of course, 
You can also browse the internet as if you're anywhere on Earth, allowing you to bypass regionally locked content and even sometimes save some money via regional pricing differences. If you're on a holiday and you need a rental car, you can VPN back to your home country, book it, and there's a good chance that doing that will bypass you being basically price gouged. That's all in the app and browser extension that are super easy to use, and you'll get a bonus for free months with my offer at nordvpn.com forward slash Bellary News, and of course, 30 day money back guarantee. So thanks to Nord for keeping the show going. Let's go into the first thing that Mick Gordon said, right? Marty lied about the circumstances regarding the Doom Eternal soundtrack and used disinformation and innuendo to blame me entirely for its failure. Afterwards, he offered me a six-figure settlement to never speak about it. As far as I'm concerned, the truth is more important. Marty's Reddit post severely impacted my professional and personal reputation. In releasing this statement, I'm exercising my right to defend myself. It is a defense, not an unprovoked attack. Issued with extreme reluctance after all other attempts to resolve the matter have failed. And then he sort of does the disclaimer of, don't use this to just go and like hate raids and shit. Because that's not what he would want. What he wants is to actually have this thing be resolved and for his professional reputation to actually be back and be normal, perhaps so that people will maybe work with him again. Now, this takes us into the absolutely hellish development cycle of Doom Eternal, because the soundtrack was not really the problem. You've got to remember, right? In a game like this, the soundtrack that you maybe will get in Spotify, that is something that somebody actually has to create. And that's yeah, it's, it, here's here's the thing about this soundtrack as well. It is my understanding that it is dynamic. So it's like as you are playing the game, like some of the music adapts itself to the way that you are playing. And it is done in a brilliant way. So it's not just like, oh, yeah, you just get the soundtrack and the soundtrack is done and boom. No, the soundtrack needs to adapt to what is happening on screen and on top of it, it also needs to properly represent the levels themselves, which he goes into detail in, in the document. Takes a lot of effort. Pretty damn different. I mean, in our case, a lot of our game's music is playing out driven by uh, FMOD within the game engine. So it's a lot of smaller elements that are then kind of more dynamically mixed together at certain points, even more so for a game like Doom Eternal. So for an audio designer, uh, in this case, like especially for a game like Doom Eternal, it's going to be quite uh, tightly linked to the actual gameplay loop and the overall state of the game itself. And that's why this game really did start off with issues, because the original plan was to score two levels per month around uh, two years before release. That's quite a lot of music. Mick says this was tight, but not impossible. Now, the thing is, he was asked to produce finished music that would be able to be matched to gameplay in the Doom 2016 style. But the problem for him is the story didn't really exist. Like, the narrative wasn't there. The levels themselves didn't fully exist either. So he's being asked to create this score, but it's... They're basically like, yeah, just just play a guitar or something. And he's like, uh... What? It, uh... Like, yeah, dude, just like do some killer like face melts, bro. That's all you need. Just a couple of face melting riffs. You're good to go. It's like, uh, that's not how you do video game music, but okay. <laughs> it's like a uh, score to what? I need more to go off. But he ends up taking a stab at it anyway. Now, he ended up suggesting about two months in and several delays deep and um, the delays were actually because of contract issues and slow communications with uh, Bethesda and it, but he basically said that they should redesign the schedule to avoid these problems. And this is the kind of thing you always want to do. You want to get ahead of the problem, try to resolve it proactively. And he essentially suggested a plan that mirrors a more typical approach, which is to first define the game's overall musical identity by writing strong, reusable themes before ramping that up to full music production for assets whenever these levels actually exist and can be playtested. And then the audio can be far more tightly uh, tied into the gameplay because the audio is being made to match the gameplay. The gameplay is being made to match the audio. And it's like, I think that people really... Um, they really don't understand how important this is. And I wish I could show, because like a very good case use of really good soundtrack would be like 
the ending portion of Shadowbringers. I'd love to show it to you, but it would be like, it would be so spoilerish. But let's just say there's, there's like a moment where the chips are down, everything seems terribly dire, and then there's a comeback. There's kind of like a comeback moment, and this is what you hear. Let me, let me just see here. If I can just grab the music real quick. No, this is not the one. Cinematic in the wait, 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 wait. God damn it. Give me a second. Uh. Is it this one? I think it is. So it's like the chips are down, everything's going really bad, then in comes a moment where it seems like things are going to change, and you get this. And this, this completely sets the mood for the whole thing and people just don't understand how important something like this is and it's like when you're really just like challenging the odds it grows up to this. it's so good it's it's like and this is what a lot of people just they don't understand and even and it's interesting that even people who work in fucking video game design they can't understand how fucking important this is that they're like yeah just just, just play just play your guitar <laughs> you know it's all kind of happening in one big happy confluence instead of just doing things per what an excel spreadsheet says and believe me the whole thing in game production of these massive plans that get drafted up by people who are not frontline staff, who don't really understand all of the particulars of actually delivering on tasks. I mean, I'm sure you've had it too in your own job. Uh, that is something that even in the local indie scene and stuff like that, I have seen like basically tank and kill projects. So it is an absolute killer. And unfortunately one that Aid and Bethesda were running straight into. So basically your audio guy's coming to you and saying, hey, this plan really doesn't suit how music for a game like this should be made. And the response to that from Stratton was, uh, well, to uh, quote, proceeded to tear me down for having the audacity to raise the issue in the first place. So the schedule of two a month just continued. Now, of course, this is a schedule that was pretty damn ill-conceived. It was a way of making this music that really just did not make sense for the game. And that did mean that with the game months later beginning to take shape, some of his guesswork in making this music was off. So weeks and weeks and weeks of work were thrown into the bin and urgent rewrites had to happen. Of course, urgent rewrites for stuff delivered in the past, even though you're still fully scheduled up for this month. And again, that is because of what he identified as being the problem with the way the audio was handled and what Stratton just absolutely refused to budge on. Now, Gordon doesn't blame individual team members here. He thinks they were sympathetic, but overall they couldn't really support him because of a bit of an unwillingness to actually escalate problems, right? Seemingly to escalate problems to management and an issue where the music budget just didn't really line up with the scope of the game. That is a kind of interesting thing. This is a game that had a lot, a lot, a lot of crunch and a pretty troubled development cycle, so clearly not all is actually shape shape at it in terms of how they, well, execute a project. Now, per their budget and everything, large levels were being given 30 seconds of exploration music each, which uh, Gordon then had to you know, sp spend time convincing people that, hey, we need more fine. than 30 seconds of, huh. of 
of you know exploration music. We need just listen thirty seconds of loop for like you know somebody who's going to spend out of ten minutes to thirty minutes in the level. It's fine. Not even thirty seconds is more than enough. Just have some sheep in the background go like ba ba ba, and it's like there you go, it's done. Need more budget being put into these. These people are fucking. Now this sort of thing just continued for a whole bunch of production with Gordon essentially just being you know, locked away many time zones apart from the core team it did, not really getting the support, the budget, all of that stuff that he would actually need to do the job. And then there's also the problem that uh, he just wasn't getting paid for this. They just didn't now, this pay him. is uh, quite an issue. We do, of course, have some uh, email evidence stuff here. Do you need, do you need money? I mean, no, we're just not going to pay you. Just keep working. and We're just not going to pay you. Dude, these people are fucking wild. Here's uh, here's just really nice, you know. I haven't been paid since December 18th, 2018. Eight months ago. I've raised the issue multiple times and haven't got anywhere. Whilst I'm happy to crunch away in good faith, I'd certainly appreciate payment for the work completed. You mind paying me? Wow, what's that? People with, like, lives and families want to actually get paid for their job? Shocking, right? And for an example of, like, the sheer scumminess here, there were two suites that of, of music that were used in the 2018 reveal of this game but they ended up not being like uh, well essentially being rejected okay um now again you've got to remember all of the audio production issues this game had had already and how that was basically just all set up for failure uh, they and let's not forget the fact didn't they do the mumble rap trailer for doom eternal uh, what that was probably connected with this Yeah, wa watch, watch this. March against the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my mission. I'm here for the purpose. I give them that vision. We put in that work. And we Dude, I remember seeing this trailer and I was like, the fuck is this? You have like Mick Gordon producing an outstanding soundtrack in Doom 2016 and then you do a trailer for Doom Eternal with this? I was like, what the fuck is this? This was so dumb. And then fans fixed it. Like, what? Well, actually, I even remember I made a video where I fixed it. I just played like music in the background and I fucking fixed it. It was hilarious, dude. It was so bad. It was so dumb. He then tried to basically not pay him for them. Yeah. yeah. He just made these you know, two suites of music that we all heard at the 2018 reveal, and it said, no, nah, we don't like it, we're not going to pay you. Even though, per the contract, they actually did use the work. They used it to promote the game. So eventually, that's one where they were forced to cave and actually pay him the money that he was owed. Again, if you're working with a contractor and you don't get exactly what you want back and you reject it, that is, in fact partially on you if it turns out that you've not set that person up for success, right? You, you don't just get a magical world where you only pay for perfection and exactly what you want. That is not how it works. But then the problem is things got even worse because the original soundtrack that was announced. And I mean, another fun little thing, um, he wasn't paid for the 11 months following January 2019. So, you know, they just seem to not really be that much of a fan of actually paying him. And now we get to the whole OST thing, because he found out that Mick Gordon's original Doom Eternal soundtrack was part of the collector's edition. Now, the problem is this OST wasn't, in fact, in production. Gordon had not been Bro, offered... Look at the, these fucking AAA companies, dude. Wasn't even in production. They announce an item for a collector's edition that's not even in production. All right? It's like, my guy. It's, it's literally the situation where, like, guys, we have a bridge to sell you on Mars. Bridge Contract doesn't exist to yet. We'll produce get to it. it. They didn't talk about the scope, the time frame, or any of that. He, in fact, learned about this work that he had to do via the media. And you might just think, but well, the music's already in the game. 
it does not it's work like different. that. I mean, it's a very mixing, thing, mastering, yeah. arrangement, that is actually a shitload of work. And then obviously there's the artistic side of how you actually put an album together, which is something that was pretty damn well done with the Doom uh, 2016. If OS. you don't understand the problem with this, by the way, I have a Starship, a Star Citizen ship to sell you. It's not in the game yet. It will be. Costs about ten thousand dollars. St. So this isn't really good. Gordon's a bit confused. He reaches out to get this all straightened out because the OST would be quite a lot of work. And then Marty Stratton just gave him a response that left him being uh, pretty confused because for reasons I still don't understand, he flatly denied me the contract and refused to do anything about the OST, saying he didn't want to cause a distraction. Now, of course, this would have been a, a distraction while Mick was continuing to work on the soundtrack for the game. And uh, it's also just worth knowing here that for most of 2019, the uh, the core development team as well were in crunch for this game. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait. So he denied him the contract for something that they literally announced using his name. Like we're producing a Mick, Gor a Mick Gordon soundtrack. Okay. Mick Gordon's doing it, right? No. What? Which does mean this is probably a situation where they just didn't really have much time for Mick Gordon's concerns, which uh, is understandable, but you, if stuff's fallen off the rails, the least you can do is be reasonable about it. So as all of this is going up shit creek, he keeps on being asked to do more music by management, and... That's while sort of legal implications uh, are being made, uh, right? If, if he failed to meet those commitments. Now, the game was then delayed from October 2019 to March 2020. Um, Id rejected then yet more work and demanded uh, new music. Uh, at, this, at this point in time, Gordon put his tools down and said, I need to be paid for my work. Because they, they weren't paying him. For 11 According months, According to them, they didn't I was the him. one being difficult. The word they used was ball ache, and they urged in no uncertain terms to carefully consider the destination my protest would lead to. Again, his protest over being paid to do his job, which is a bit ridiculous. Now, he was eventually paid, paid in November of 2019, and after that, he then relented and carried out the work. Now, the aftermath to this is uh, then not great. He says that he finished the project feeling unhappy, empty, in a state of anxiety where he basically had to crunch for two years because of this brutal schedule that apparently expected a finalized score before the game was even ready for a finalized score, which is just dumb. He alleges then that he had been required to ultimately make almost double the amount of music, like in terms of minutes of music, that he was originally uh, tasked and contracted for. He has still, in fact, not been contracted to produce the Doom Eternal OST. And uh, then he actually discovered that the game, in feature, uh, the game featured nearly all of the music that he had produced. But they only paid for half of it, right? Uh, rejected. They got the two for one special. They got the, Bethesda just got the two for, they're like, hey, if we buy all of it, we can, can we get the two for one discount? Like, listen, we buy two tracks and you give us one for free. We buy one track, we get one for free. They got, they gave him the two for. Tracks, mock-ups, demos, ideas, sketches, a massive amount of additional music well beyond the budget allocated in the uh, contract produced at their request and shared in good faith. But. They, they included this stuff directly in game and marketing and updates without paying for it. They still refused to pay for it. So this is like stuff where they dude. were rejecting some tracks and trying to not pay him for it and then using those tracks anyway, <laughs> which is ridiculous. Bro, what so the fuck? Overall, then, he believes that this cycle of demanding music and then rejecting it, but then using the music was essentially tantamount to them just trying to elicit a massive amount of unpaid work for him in order to compensate for their budgeting shortfalls. I mean, what the Dude, that absolute is plan fiesta. But we now get to the OST in the 2020 situation. So he had still actually heard nothing about the soundtrack in spite of, uh, you know, six months of pre-orders. 
for this product that has his name attached to it. So what he then does is he sidesteps Marty Stratton, the like studio director of it, and he went straight to Bethesda, right? So he does that, and uh, he was actually able to work with Bethesda. So he states then that there was draft terms between those two parties, 12 songs, it had final approval, he would hand over the source files, and the deadline was April 19th, with an agreement that flexibility 16. could be offered, but a bonus would be there if the deadline was hit, and that he would be paid for a separate album from 2015 that he produced for Bethesda that he actually had never been paid for. So that's cool. Bro! Now all of it <laughs> Listen, <laughs> young me was like, oh man, I want to work in the games industry. 40 year old me is like, fuck that shit. This was in a draft form and it was not a signed contract. So March 11th, that's when we find out the that the OSD state. had been delayed and that it would no longer ship with the collector's editions. Then March 18th, 48 hours before the release of Doom Eternal, Mick was sent the contract with the terms. And uh, we know this because there is a DocuSign, uh, later, well, uh, you know, a, a DocuSign like screenshot that does include the date. Obviously, that could be faked, but I imagine that if he was going around faking this kind of thing, uh, that's kind of disprovable pretty easily, and you would get into a great deal of trouble for that sort of thing. So yep. that's that time stamped. And this overall means that he had 29 days to produce and master 12 uh, pieces of music with no direction from id Software per his claims. He tried to press on making the most of it. By April 3rd, half the album was complete. And then on that very same day, Marty Stratton emailed that April 16th was now a legal obligation to prevent uh, refunds being owed under consumer protection laws because consumers needed to receive it by uh, April 20th. So once again, from Gordon's perspective, and yes, due to mismanagement and idiocy from id, uh, things had, had then just got worse. But Marty Stratton found another solution, a very bad solution, which was Another OST. He commissions lead audio designer Chad to go and uh, make another OST using stuff that Mick had already Wait, submitted. As we hit April, we grew incredibly concerned about Mick delivering the OST to us in time. I personally asked our lead audio designer at it, Chad, <laughs> Chad, <laughs> to begin work on it versions of the tracks. A backup plan should Mick not be able to deliver on time, which is contradicted by the metadata of the 70 plus tracks that Moss Holder sent to Gordon for review. Perhaps unknown to Marty, BWF metadata details the exact creation date, time, and software used by whoever made the edits. Metadata in Chad's files show he began work on the alternative OST as far back as August 2019, six months before. So it was his intention all along to have the 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 soundtrack be produced in house whilst having the Mick Gordon name associated with it. This guy, look, if this is true, this guy's a fucking scumbag, dude. This guy's a fucking scumbag. And here's just from uh, from Marty's open letter, right, where he said, As we hit April, we grew increasingly concerned about Mick delivering the OST to us on time. I personally asked our lead audio designer at id to work on id versions of the tracks. A backup plan should Mick not be able to deliver on time. Now, this is quite funny because this is actually contradicted by the metadata of the 70 plus tracks that Moss Holder had sent to Gordon for review, Right. Uh, so, potentially unknown to Marty, uh, BWF metadata details the exact creation date, time, and software used by whoever made the edits. Metadata in Chad's files shows he began work on their alternative OST as far back as August 2019, which is six months before Marty received the contract. And do then remember that the original release date for Doom Eternal was November 19th which then would maybe make people think, was their plan to release this with Gordon's uh, name on it, but for it to not really be an OST that he mixed and mastered, right? And to that, you know, therefore not live up to his standards, which uh, I don't know if uh, you caught this, but the Doom Eternal OST, complete shit. <laughs> so at this stage, yeah. Gordon's not particularly happy, right? Where 
this soundtrack is is just not good. It's not a good album. So he then lays out to it a plan where he would work in his 12 tracks and submit them in line with their agreement. Uh, and then facing a technical issue on the final day of the deadline, he had 10 songs ready for handover and asked for four to five hours to fix the remaining two. And Bethesda were actually on board with this, granting him that extension. But Marty Stratton was not on board. This right? guy's a dick. He okay, dude, there's no way. He wasn't really on dick, board man. with the OST tracks as produced by Gordon. He asked for 10 different songs. Again, we're talking about the day of the deadline here. So on this day of the deadline, four days before, uh, you know, th these things would be legally eligible or liable for refunds, Stratton then allegedly asks for 10 different songs. Gordon then refuses to do this. Stratton asks Gordon to hand everything over and says that basically in, you know, Emmett Id would handle the final assembly of this. And that does mean that the OST released without Mick Gordon hearing, a, hear, hearing the damn thing and the results were not good. The response to the soundtrack was uh, pretty brutal all over the internet. We yeah. talked about it. I mean, we loved both me and Matt. We loved the Doom 2016 soundtrack. Uh, a lot of the internet did. And that is why it just was absolutely... It was not good stuff. It was not good stuff. And that's pretty rough on uh, on Mick as well, because it's kind of like his music being bastardized. Worst of all is the inclusion of hours of music and rejected demos I was not and still have not been paid to produce. As an example, Final Sin, Sandy City, track 59, was a rough idea mocked up in haste for the ending cutscene. This exact demo file was immediately rejected. In fact, Chad was part of the panel that rejected it, but he included it on the album and listed himself as a co-artist, despite having absolutely nothing to do with it. Bro! Why? I don't, here's the thing, right? Mick Gordon, the soundtrack that he produced in 2016, was fucking iconic. Like most people know about the, the 2016 Doom soundtrack and how fucking awesome it was. Why are you basically fucking railroading this artist? Like what the fuck are you doing? Like what is wrong with you? More importantly, the song is based off a melody written by Bobby Prince, the composer of Doom 2, who has not been credited anywhere on the album. Oh its software God. never paid me for this demo, which is produced in good faith and not meant for public release. Cool. Wow. Okay. So this is all going up shit creek. So, and again, this is soundtrack with Mick Gordon's name on it that is being trashed all over the internet. This is bad for him. So he basically uh, received a request for a call with Marty Stratton because it were also noticing the response to this soundtrack. It went poorly. According to Gordon, it opened with, frankly, we're too fucking nice. Apparently that is what Stratton snapped at him. So they then discussed the OST, the consumer protection concerns, the production of the OST, and the contract issues that led to problems. And uh, Marty explained he was trying to protect all of us, but by now, I had not fallen in line. I was on my own. As soon as people came after us, we come after you, he said. So that's rough. Stratton then asks Gordon to take full responsibility for the album, which is a awful move for his career. Like that what is basically saying, hey, could you fuck? throw yourself under the bus for my benefit? That is total scum Why behavior. Aren't you going to so then Gordon refuses that because he feels it's total bullshit. Supposedly then, this call went on for an hour, they cleared their air, they began to make a plan to repair this situation. Stratton then asks Gordon to hold off on all public statements until they could jointly discuss a shared statement, right? Okay, all good. So th the problem happens, but the two uh, aggrieved parties, they finally hash their stuff out, and they but again, decide. I remember seeing a tweet from Mick Gordon where he said, I wasn't the one who did the mastering on those tracks because people were like tweeting a bunch of bullshit at him. And he at one point he just snapped and he's like, I wasn't the one working on it. I didn't do that. To work together for a solution. All good, right? No, no, not all good. Because um, seemingly completely unilaterally, Marty Stratton just revives a Reddit account 
that had been dormant for three years and then published an open letter on the original soundtrack. Yeah. So, Gordon and his legal representative reached out to Id around this because, and you'll remember at the time, that open letter was brutal. And I think most of us, we, we were inclined to believe it at the time because it didn't really feel uh, feasible that, that, that they would lie in such a... A, a sort of a blatant way, right? And that didn't really seem feasible to people. And with a lot of those allegations, people just felt that the shoe fit. Well, in Gordon's view, Marty published a series of false accusations. Id Software shipped Doom Eternal with twice the music that they'd actually paid for. After Gordon was able to demonstrate that uh, the allegations were contradictable and the music was present in the game, Zenimax offered to settle. So... This is basically like, you know, a sort of a settlement out of court where it's like, all right, here's the legal agreement. You do these things. We give you this money and the issue is considered closed, right? Um, okay, so these negotiations for a settlement go back and forth. Marty Stratton would be required to take the Reddit post down, but he refused that. Gordon would be paid the money owed, but he was also asked to produce a new OST. He accepted on the basis that, you Dude. know, he... It's, it's like, look, again, if all of this is true, Mick Gordon appears to be the only fucking professional in the middle of this whole situation. Despite getting fucked around repeatedly, not getting fucking paid, having to deal with the, this fucking diva, Marty Stratton, he's still like, sure, I'll make another OST. I'd be like, motherfucker, you could pay me a million dollars and I'd tell you to go suck a cow's dong. Get the fuck out of here. Fucking OST, OST on these nuts. He was paid and all of this stuff. So the settlement then gets withdrawn, right? Gordon alleges a new letter of response that claimed that Stratton was willing to, well, issue legal proceedings over times that Gordon had basically publicly discussed Doom Eternal and uh, the use of that music in his, his own portfolio. And then, uh, that, that's a letter that offers a new settlement. And this is the settlement that is, this is, this is the hush money, this is the bribe a six-figure sum in return for taking full public responsibility for the failure of the OST. Details were absurd. Marty would keep the Reddit post up indefinitely. He would never retract his false accusations nor clarify his statement, and his story would forever be considered the truth. I could never discuss Doom Eternal, the OST, or the Reddit post. If I was asked, I had to say no comment. I had to pledge I would never badmouth Marty or anyone working under the Zenimax umbrella, and I could never criticize any product developed by a Zenimax studio. This is so ridiculous. Ouch. And, uh, yeah, so he just had to accept blame and he'd be given money and Marty Stratton would be protected. So Mick refuses this on principle because it's just wrong. He feels that he's being asked to give up his right to tell the truth for some money, that that's completely unacceptable. And I suppose in the light of the reputational and career damage that this would have done, like, yeah, absolutely. It's wild that seemingly they're completely unwilling to remove this post, even if it seems they maybe know it's bullshit. Now, Gordon then reported the post to uh, some Reddit mods, actually, and uh, the post was taken down and then put back up within 12 hours, with Stratton's lawyers uh, delivering that removing the Reddit post had greatly offended Stratton. He was furious and made it clear in the strongest terms that an amicable resolution would be impossible. And that is what leads us to this situation then, right? So he feels personally aggrieved by this. Obviously, his artistic process has been fiddled around with. They've not paid him. They seemingly have breached contracts. He, of course, had to deal with a lot of online abuse and harassment, stuff like that. It's, I mean, even including things like, you can see here the little note from Connor that's like, not sure if we can put this in because of demonetization and age rating. But, you know, the worst stuff, basically, was said to him. People harassed his other clients. You know, the... I began receiving specific expressions of violence. The content so vivid it made me sick. The torrent of abuse telling me how to kill myself, how I'd be mutilated, how they would circulate photos of my body to traumatize my family, how my family would be murdered, how they'd hurt my animals, how they'd shoot up any event I attended, how I'd be raped to death, really started to wear me down in ways I couldn't previously imagine. Holy shit. 
the worst stuff basically was said to him people harassed his other clients he kind of gets the you know living hell that being the main character of the internet can be especially when you know trusted acclaimed game developer comes and tries to just stick the shiv in you and i think like some of the situation with stratton as well like if i remember correctly he was featured in that no clip documentary which uh you know will have meant that people kind of will have been more familiar with him right they won't have been sort of primed to it's the sort of thing like if this all came out from a randy pitchford i think people would be a little bit more suspicious but i suppose it had uh, at least in the public consciousness a more clean record so ultimately gordon is drained i think this letter is a very cathartic thing for him and he ultimately says i never quit doom i quit a toxic client it's time to leave this sad state of affairs behind. I'm forever thankful to the true-hearted folks who have continued to put their faith in me, even in the face of Marty's attempts to damage my reputation. I'm happy to say the projects I've been part of since have been some of the most rewarding experiences of my career. So it does seem that things are ending up turning out okay for him. I imagine they will get significantly better in light of this post. Now, it could be the case that the truth may lie somewhere in the middle between yeah. these two different things that absolutely could be the case maybe this is the sort of time where we do need the journalists to hop in to reach out to their contacts at bethesda to see right you know what what did people in bethesda think what did people Come in on, jason think? schreier i time don't to know do your but work. this is exactly when we do need a big old dose of journalism so that we can know precisely what happened now that being said these are all pretty damn serious claims. He does seem to have evidence for a lot of them. He obviously would be, you know, if, if there was fabrications here, if there was like a lot of lies and stuff, I think he would obviously be, he'd be risking uh, bad legal things happening. So he does have quite a lot to lose when he makes a statement like this. And a lot of people would take that as being a bit of an indication of truth, right? Um, Cause you know what I mean? Like there's some things you just don't lie about. But again, a lot of people would have said that about the original post for Marty Stratton. So I can say that, that personally. There's also a couple of things that uh, Bellwater doesn't talk about, but I saw in some articles regarding to this where, for instance, uh, the soundtrack of Doom 2016 was like, uh, received like awards and stuff. And Bethesda did not invite him to go and receive those awards. As somebody else showed up, received the awards, and I think he got to see them like once or something like that. I don't know. There was something else about the awards as well, which is just like complete fucking scum behavior. Uh, personally, I do find myself being more sympathetic to the Mick Gordon side of things. Um, I think some of that evidence feels pretty, uh, it just does feel pretty convincing. A lot of the timeline stuff does add up you could say that that could just be done you know after the fact to line up but it does actually genuinely seem uh to to line up you think about why that soundtrack would have been a massive clusterfuck that kind of makes sense if only and uh, I, I mean audio so is routinely not treated death. that well in the games industry another example um i've forgotten her surname but sarah who uh, she did the soundtrack of uh, Anthem, and you might think, huh, Anthem, lol. But its soundtrack actually was pretty good. It had some like, kind of nice creative The soundtrack for Anthem it. was she really good. She also did like Assassin's Creed Origins, some of the other recent Assassin's Creed games. Um, like, which you, people meme on Anthem, but the soundtrack was actually good. Like, let me let me just show you guys the the like the original the the main track. It was fucking awesome. I think it was, was it the freelancers or no. This is good shit. I forget which one it was because that was one. Oh, it must be this one. Yeah, it's this one. Ah, 
Ah, and there's this one as well. Wait. Damn it, I forget what... Th there was one that I really liked, and I forget what the name of it was. It's this one. <laughs> I mean, th there's a lot of good tracks, but this one I think was like my favorite. I use this one in a lot of my videos. God, I'm getting, it's like, I, you guys need to understand, I realize for a lot of people Anthem was a meme, but Anthem was actually, like, in terms of gameplay, it was a really good game have been sonically really strong sam actually goes for the modern warfare games and uh, she has actually left uh, modern warfare 2 she's kind of left that project isn't going to work with infinity ward again because of a breakdown with the audio director at infinity ward and that's just another example of uh, of things musically not really going quite well and it's a tremendous shame Excuse because me. music really can make or break a game i mean in terms of stuff with our studio and this is a fairly rare thing. Usually, I mean, in indie games, music is a bit of an afterthought. It's kind of done pretty late stage. Uh, whereas for us, we've had full-time music from the very, very beginning. We have a humongous uh, amount of music for our game. And it's all, I mean, the, the, the music has came together as the scenes have came together in very close collaboration. Um, I would just say, like, you cannot treat music badly. Music is you can't. so yeah. core to the experience of it a is. video game, especially one like ours. It is grossly underrated how important music is to video games, which is why, you know, whenever I see a really good soundtrack like Final Fantasy XIV, the Xenoblade games, you know, there's just a bunch of games I'm always talking about. Look, look at the soundtrack. Look at how important this is. Look at how this makes you feel. Just like, even just now, you see you see Zalex in chats like, Rui, stop, you're making me sad. Yeah, because you remember, you start to associate, when you hear the music, you start to associate the gameplay that you were doing at the time. Like, even for a lot of you guys, like, I'll put on the Shadowbring's main theme, like I did a little bit earlier, and a lot of you guys will be taken right back to that moment. Music is super important. Which is why we've treated music with such reverence. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, man, it sucks. It absolutely sucks. Um, and especially, you know, <sighs> the, the, you know, there's a lot of great music that we didn't get, right? That sort of, you know, Mick didn't get to give to the people. Um, so, hey, hopefully there will be uh, more of his music getting out there in the future. If you would like to check out some really strong Mick Gordon music, actually a fair amount of the stuff from Killer Instinct is Mick Gordon, and it's really, really damn strong. So there you go. I mean, this, man, um, what? I, I also need to get going, guys. I really do need to pick up my kids from school. I already linked the video. Uh, make sure to check it out. Leave it a like. Give it some watch time. All of that jazz. A lot of this fantastic content. I got to get the hell out of here. Got to get my kids so thank you all very much for hanging out with me. I'm sorry about the whole uh, kerfuffle with uh, the frozen sodium throne. Uh, hopefully we'll fix that at some point next week. But uh, for now, there's not, uh, there's not going, it's just not going to be possible to do one this week because Akalon literally doesn't have power. I can't fix the South African government electricity problems. I'm getting out of here. Thank you all very much. See you guys in the next one.